Okay, well, let's come back here now. And cutting deaths from HIV is one of the success stories, of course, of modern medicine. But while infection rates remain low in most of the UK, in Glasgow, they have jumped. A major study has revealed that seven years ago, only 1% of people in the city who inject drugs had HIV. But by the end of last year, it was more than 10%, a tenfold increase, of course. Now, we have obtained details which point to two main reasons on the whole. The closure of two needle exchanges, plus a switch by addicts from injecting heroin to cocaine, which means the distressing prospect, as we'll see, of more regular hits. On the streets of Glasgow... Hard drugs are easy to find. But there's now an HIV outbreak in this city, driven by people who are injecting drugs and sharing dirty needles. You see needle sharing every, almost every single day. I've done it once. Why did you do that? Because I was desperate to get my next fixed. Two of Glasgow's busiest needle exchanges have closed recently. Places addicts could get clean needles. People are using needles that they find in the street. And it's been lying there for about five days. It's blunt or probably rusty. They're catching all sorts of things, like hep C, HIV. Why are they doing it? Just because there's no needle. Exchanges of it. A study into this epidemic will be published in the Lancet HIV Journal tomorrow. The author says Glasgow has provided fertile ground for an outbreak. The situation we're seeing in Glasgow is unlike anything we've seen in the UK for over 30 years. Uh, in Glasgow's HIV situation at the moment is certainly an outlier. In the midst of this outbreak, Glasgow's been closing needle exchanges. There is very strong evidence to suggest that needle and syringe provision is very effective uh, prevention of bloodborne viruses such as HIV. So uh, closure of these services at the time of an outbreak is a very, very challenging situation. There is another factor. Glasgow's heroin users are increasingly injecting cocaine, and whereas they would have craved a heroin fix a couple of times a day, they need to inject cocaine every couple of hours. That means they use more needles, even if it means reusing or sharing. Drug users get needles wherever they can find them, and those who work with addicts say there were plenty of warnings closing needle exchanges would make things worse. Lots of discussions had taken place at high levels. Clearly, um, those concerns were not listened to, um, and people are still now at very high risk. We showed our filming to the Scottish government's public health minister. It kind of really does bring it home when you hear it directly from someone who's who's uh, got that that that. Um, direct experience. It is within the Scottish Government's power to invest in needle exchanges. Why hasn't the Scottish Government filled the gap with a public funded needle exchange? So in, in th th this is um, an area that we have to work in partnership with, with other service providers and it's obviously disappointing when a service is removed and we do need to look at how we continue to provide that, that support. Glasgow's NHS has now created a mobile needle exchange to reach addicts on the streets but the virus is still spreading. Britain hasn't seen an epidemic like this since the 1980s, and it is not being contained. Peter Smith, News at 10, Glasgow.